We're almost done with the interrogation, and now we have to decide whether or not to arrest Klashe. Personally, I think she's deep in it. She's extremely involved in this, way more than she'd like to. According to what she told us, though, if she gets arrested, she will be terminated by the moral intern because she did uh, a lot of bad, bad, bad things. I have a couple more questions for her, and then we will decide her fate. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? Now, in the last episode, we came across a drama skill check. The drama skill check, which will potentially allow us to see through her lies. Let's get back to those lies you told. Lies? I... She repeats, then trails off. It's unclear what she intended to say. Yes, we demand she be punished for deceiving us. We demand her anxiety. We demand her fear. We can arrest her, right now, or we can question the information she gave to us. Your real name isn't Klasje Amandeux. I agree. You wouldn't give us your real name, not when people are after you. Okay. Her voice cracks suddenly. Like there's a garrote around her neck. Okay, what? Okay, it's not. Good. You can tell me the truth. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to Common, sir. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name. So I lied. Like I lied before. Like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time. I'm so tired of it. Was the password bullshit too? That passport you keep hidden. No. It's submerged in a plastic boy on the coast, in the reeds. It just... doesn't say Clausia Amandu. It says Anuk Mea Smith. Falsified documents? Passport and visa. Given to me by my employer. I can't even use them. My employer probably leaked the name, Maya Smith, to hurt me. Why would they do that? I didn't show up to a rendezvous. They don't take that lightly. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd do something to me. The job was finished. I'm just a liability now. She fears an arrest right here and now. This has been an awful turn of events for her. Damn, drama. You did some good work for once. I wasn't expecting this from drama. Where is this boy? West of the boardwalk. In the reeds. On the coast there. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. I'm not sure I could even find it now. West of the boardwalk. That's, uh... Near the film building? I would like to say. It's useless. We're doing it. West of the boardwalk in the reeds, we have to check this boy out. The lieutenant makes a note of it. You're welcome to it. It's in the reeds northwest of here, past the broken sewage pipe, right near the waterline. Tell me your real name. It's Katarzyna Lazie. The smile on her face is timid, almost painfully so. It's a Grad name. Jimsk or Yuga Grad in origin. Not Occidental at all. Smells of motor oil, tiger, economic desolation, and rock music infused alcoholism. Hold on. Katarzyna Oranjine is not an Oranese name, is it? It's not even Muindi, it's Grad. My parents were Zemsk immigrants, but I'm nationalized Oranese. All I remember is Oranie. Alasie is my father's name. Finally we meet Katarzyna Arazie. So hard to, to read these names, man. She nods. Her round eyes meet yours. They seem moist from the wind on the roof. Enough. She nods, her back straight, ready 
for whatever is next. Let's change the subject. Hopefully I can walk out of this. She did say she will be here until 11 o'clock, unless she uh, escapes in the meantime. I don't know how uh, anything works. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath, as if in the presence of some tiger. Hopefully we can return to this. I've been thinking, isn't there some sort of witness protection the uh, RCM can offer? Because she did say, if she gets arrested, she's done for. There's gotta be something. Personally, I think she is far from innocent. She, she reminds me of this, uh, you know, the Bond girls, the James Bond girls. They're using seduction tactics to lure you in and manipulate you. And Clashe is no exception to the rule. She did this during the questioning. For the most part, during the first and the second time we questioned her. She withheld information. So at this point, it's safe to assume that she would do anything to not get arrested. She will fight for it. And she will fight hard. Even point the finger at poor victim to get away. But we will see how this plays out. I'm glad we cannot arrest her now and we can focus on uh, something silly, something dumb. The trap is full of locusts, but they seem weak and unhealthy. Poor things. Good thing my boy didn't fall for her trap. I still feel there's something to uh, this shack here. Like, there is a singular chair inside, just sitting there. I had um, an inner thought at some point about it, and then nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, are we at the boardwalk yet? Not this way, though. Ask him. He might know something. Alright, should be around here somewhere. I think at this point we've checked all the traps and we found absolutely nothing. The trap is filled with dead and dying locusts. Most of them aren't moving anymore. You still can't see a phasmid anywhere. Poor things. Let me say this again. West of the boardwalk, on the coast. West of the boardwalk. I wonder if it's on the bridge. I mean the bridge, the boardwalk, duh. Whoa, 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 hey. Something over there too. Excuse me. <laughs> Pardon me. A few locusts trudge along the wall of the trap. The rest are piled in a heap in the corner, dead. No phasmid anywhere. Poor things. That must have been the last trap. Could this be the bogey Glacia told us about? A metal and plastic contraption bobs up and down amidst the trembling reeds. At first, it just looks like trash, but if you look closer... That over there must be the boy class you told us about. The one she hid her passport in. We should take a look. Pick it up. You lift the boy out of the water without much effort. It's not tied to anything. The cords dangling from the bottom appear to have been cut. Examine the plastic ball. The number 11 has been written on the yellow plastic. It hasn't been in the water for very long, but it's already discolored and slimy with silt. A latch holds it close, but only just barely. The brittle metal of the latch has cracked. Simple construction. Very unsafe. 
Shake the boy. There's something in there, splashing around. <laughs> Sniff it? Sure. It smells like you would expect it to smell. A concentrated version of the coast. Salt, industrial slop and decay. The water this side of the peninsula is cleaner. Actually, smells a little salty. Open it. A shot glass's worth of seawater pours out. Some algae and nothing else. Well, damn. For like it's still here, a little longer and it would have floated away. We still got here too late. There's nothing of use here anymore. No documents. Who do you think took them? I have no idea. The lieutenant taps his foot, frowning. <laughs> this is a disaster. Everything is ruined. This is a minor quirk. We know what was in the boy anyway. Or think we do. This is a small loose end, either way. Not important, I hope. Could this be related to the cryptozoologists and uh, their little expedition? In my experience, cryptids are generally uninterested in travel documentation. <sighs> we should go. But they might have found it and opened it themselves. You could ask the miss what she thinks. Later, if you have the time. Though you doubt she'll tell you much at this point. I do see something back there. But I don't think, yeah, we cannot go on the, um, on this, uh, on this part. Can't really tell what it is. It looks like garbage, though. Could be anything. Hey, it's still experience, right? What now? Determine where the shot came from. All oh, right, since we're here, check the boardwalk for uh, bullets. Boardwalk, yeah, we are on the other side. I'm still surprised no one ever heard the gunshot, which makes me think it was either a silenced weapon. Oh, no, this is the phone. It was either a silenced weapon or the uh, the gunshot came from really, really, really far away. But we did conclude that the shot from uh, very far away would be almost impossible to make. It's a long way down to your death from here. 20 meters at least. Thanks, that's not what I'm here for, though. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. No, nothing here. Check boardwalk for bullet traces. Maybe I need to up my perception a little bit, or my uh, visual calculus? Let's do visual calculus for this. How much do I have? I have plus two. And we have three points. Uh, I'll do one extra. I'll put one extra point in there, just in case. And my perception is currently... Six. And in here it is... I don't have any? <laughs> I don't have any uh, perception in here? Please wear something with perception. I have six points of perception. I don't think we need any more than uh, what our clothes can provide for free. The action speed drama. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Minus one perception, no. Wait, what? The boots for perception. Drama. That's it? Do we have a minus on perception on anything? 
Visual calculus is also pretty nice. Yeah, I don't see anything. Huh. Wonder if we can now go to the island as well. Check island for bullet traces, check land's end for bullet traces. Uh, land's end is where the uh, the bunker is. It's pretty close. Let's have a look at that as well. You know we might find bullet traces uh, pretty much anywhere. Maybe on the way there. Traces, bullet traces. Oh, we also have to open this one. An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. Jesus the door Christ. hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. This is anything but improved. <laughs> Interfacing is bad. 3%, Jesus. Could this structure have been used to take the shaft? From here to the whirling? I can't see how. The church is in the way. You're right. I don't want to try a 3%. Give me a second here. Interfacing. There's got to be something we can do. I will take an 8% at this point. I just want to try it. Interfacing uh, the gloves. Yes. We even have the tool, but we cannot use the tool in this situation. I have plus one interfacing. Is that all I can do? I mean, technically it's seven interfacing with... Uh... Oh. Yeah. That's exactly what I needed. All right, Kim, we're opening this bitch. An old door worn by elements guards the depot. It's the not improved! Has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened. You rattle the handle a bit, then push on the door with all your weight. It does not budge. Not only is it locked, it's also jammed shut. Huh. The door's shut tight. How can we get in there? We don't get in there. What do you mean? We get into, like, everywhere? Frankly. You're just going to have to accept the fact that you can't get in through every single door. No, no. We've gotten into every door thus far. That's what we do. We open doors. We're cops. That's our perk. Even Everard knew that's a part of our MO. I'm not gonna accept this. The door could be part of the investigation. Relax. No one's hiding in there. If we can't open it, others can't either. And thus they can't get in. He looks at the door with a rueful smile. At least you can think about opening it. About doors in general. They are, after all, fundamental to your life. Perhaps something useful would come from this. What was that? God damn it. It cannot be. A disgrace. That door on the coast. You remember the one, right? The one that leads to the abandoned supply depot. Why, in the name of all that's holy, does it not open? Why? There has to be a way to get through that unopenable door. By God, you're the police. All doors are supposed to open before you. What will the others at the precinct think if you can't open a goddamn door? There must be a way. Uh... All right. All of the things I have are so good. And I don't want to change them. Especially the super cop. Dude. Look at these. Look at these beauties here. Oh, 
all of them are freaking fantastic. All of them. No. Plus one XP for every orb clicked? I forgot about this. This is a thing. Find better loot in uh, locked containers. Mm. Maybe I can forget the Jamrock shuffle and try something new. This is not gonna take too long thinking about it. <laughs> How about the Wompty Dompty Dom Center? I don't like this one. Like, all red checks fail while we're researching this. Oh boy. That has to be a pain. Minus two physical instruments. Date of birth generator. Seven hours and fifteen minutes. Uh, oh, temporary research bonus. None. Maybe I can replace this for this. We've pretty much looked into every single container at this point, so maybe I can forget this one and take the uh, a flight. Yeah, let's try the date of birth generator. Let's do something new. Alright, back to looking for traces. Is there something here that would indicate a sniper used this place as a nest for taking the shot? Just some urban detritus, a bottle, and a dilapidated old comms tower. In the distance you can hear the breakers roar. I don't see it, Lieutenant W. Freitor. I don't see a person take a shot here and hit something there. In the whirling in Iraq. Maybe the campfire was used by the perpetrator. To warm his hands before pulling the trigger? Perhaps. But anyone could have made this. The coast is specked with fire this time of year. Truthfully, this seems like a very poor choice to take a 1.2 kilometer rifle shot from. Visibility is awful. There's water vapor everywhere. I think we can rule out... Beatable Prime, was it? Maybe the assailant climbed the comms tower uh, took the shot there. It's not possible to climb that ladder. And even if it were... Why? There's no platform up there to aim from. The lieutenant looks up, raising his collar. What about the cigarette butts? Those? A smoking assailant who favors Tumutiri to Astra or Juan? Cigarette butts are everywhere. This is a common brand for all men. Still, you felt it was important enough to make a mental note. That means... something. You didn't pay attention to any of the other cigarette butts on the coast. True. Look over the water, to the whirling in rags. There. 1.2 kilometers over the wave-crossed bay. Through heavy, dark grey curtains of rain, you see the smallest rectangle, barely visible. A glowing light on the third floor of the whirling in rags. With binoculars, you would see a young woman's shape move behind the glass, her limbs long and slender. I thought that the bunker connected to the island for some peculiar reason. It seems to be quite close to the shore from here. The boardwalk. We didn't find anything at the boardwalk though. But that's one down. That's one down. Go back to the boardwalk, have, a, have another look. Uh, maybe we missed it, maybe it was on the side when we found the boy. But that, yes, was a huge disappointment. So we are here. Hold on a second. Uh, I want to go all the way there to the north. If there is a connecting point to that island, it should be very, very close to the lighthouse.
So, from here, yeah, it's very, very close. We can barely see it, though. It was an interesting thought. Yeah, I still think that the bunker connects to the island somehow. There has to be a connection. This is an underground passage, like a tube uh, heading, leading, leading to that island. And that's where the perpetrator made his escape. Now, as for the... Uh the boardwalk would that person even have a clear shot from the boardwalk I mean the um, the angle is a little off and I don't see anything from this side visual calculus doesn't do anything around this part so no but it's clear, it says, check boardwalk for bullet traces. Um, then again, we found the boy below the boardwalk. So maybe it's on the other side. Let's have a look at that. Can't get over how beautiful this game looks. So many buildings here, and I cannot access any of them. So yeah, the boardwalk is uh, is up here. No visual calculus, however. It's not figuring. I don't see it. Maybe up here. We could try up here. And then I don't know if we if it doesn't click. Uh, I have no more ideas. I don't know. Or this building, perhaps? There's no way the man came all the way to the roof. There is a flight of stairs on the other building, on the Feln building. But could it be connected somehow? Yeah, I don't see my boy saying anything. There's only this, but we've already inspected that one. Uh, make Titus give up Ruby's location. Uh, we could ask Everard about SL and the drug lab. What? The drug operation in the church. Maybe you can use this to manipulate him. And Kim said it's almost impossible. Spirit is eternal. Hold on. Oh, this is something else. Okay, the working firearm that shoots 4.46 ammo. This is not complete yet. And then we have the pissing competition. Ask Kim about this after the initial inspection of the dead body. Hey, Kim. Tell me about the pissing competition. Yes. What about me? No? Good. Let's change the subject. What do you want to know? Yeah! Now that we've inspected the scene, I want to know more about this pissing competition you mentioned. What's there to say? It's just stupidity. What kind of stupidity? The cop kind. Our precincts can decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine. As if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the Union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. Ah, so this is a struggle over who runs Martinez? Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. 
It was quite the brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 102 cases solved. What I am is least interested in a pissing competition. So he volunteered to represent the 57th, but not out of competitiveness. On the contrary. What's special about Martinez? Martinez? Nothing. It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. North of the interchange doesn't exist. I wonder what this says about me. That it was sent by my station? Hmm. Oh god. <laughs> Don't be scared, but I think I might have supernatural abilities. Uh, wow, what is going on? Oh, this is... No, no, no. I don't want to go down that road. Not with Kim. Kim is precious. Kim is my precious baby boy. Is there something that doesn't stroke my ego, preferably? I'm gonna leave why I was sent uh, unspecified. The silence carries. Um, okay, enough of the competition then. Uh, tell me something else. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. He's actually glad it's addressed now. It's a white... Check? Logic? Where do I get the feeling we're gonna miss that one? <laughs> but I wanna try... I didn't even read what it was. I didn't even read what it was. It's probably something really, 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 really bad. Okay, reminder to myself to switch back to my other glasses after this. Whatever the case, I don't wanna hurt Kim. Kim yes. is... Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, the, the question is fine. The question is fine. Why did the 41st send me? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight Precinct 57. Uh, wait. What? No, that can't be right. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late wearing piss-stained disco garb. You weren't sent here to win. Kim? What if my precinct sent me out this case because I'm a fuck-up, like, as a joke? I've considered it. So it's true. It would be immensely ugly of them, not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. Do you really see me as a safe bet? Safe? No. But you're old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. Oh, Kim, he's so sweet. He's right. There are no airtight theories, just paranoia. You've given it some thought. Now let it go. Thank you, Kim. You're a treasure. Monday and Tuesday stuff done. Everything else we're um, working on. Oh, God, the egghead puzzle. This man is driving me nuts, man. But we have to tackle that, sooner or later. And by tackle, I mean, we should do it now. Oh boy, that man, that man is driving me crazy. I can't connect with the youth these days. What's wrong with me? There's something wrong with me, isn't there? They're so hard to read.
still, I find it extremely bizarre. The fact that we don't get any visual calculus around the boardwalk area. And I've searched quite a lot. Alright, let's get back to the church. See what these people want. Beep, 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 beep. The clothes. True, hard, full of car. I don't know what you want from me, man. Hard car. Hard car to the mega. Internally coherent. All car. All right. Yeah. He furrows his brow as his very large head traces the sublime, invisible movement of the music in the very real air of the church. Hardcore! Ah! Oh, but seriously, I'm a little worried it isn't. The question is, what is the question? Uh... <laughs> Just answer the question! But there was no question. Dude! The clothes! True! Hard! Full! Car! Hard car! Hard car to the mega! Internally coherent! All car! All right! Yeah! He furrows his brow. Hard car! Ah! So hardcore! Is it though? It is! But is it? I mean, really? The question is... What is the question? No, but seriously. Oh my I'm god! I'm a bit worried it isn't. He frowns and starts bobbing his head back and forth once more. Don't be alarmed. Everything is okay. He isn't actually worried. Everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is, it could be even more so. You said you were worried. What do you think is wrong with the music? There's nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. He turns pensive all of a sudden. Sometimes I just feel like anodic music is in its infancy, you know? For example, take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping for the last months and will continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? He thinks for a moment. Then his expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right. It's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit proto. Like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you are pretty certain a thing cannot be both proto and hardcore. How much is the fish? I'm sorry? <laughs> what? It's proto, not hardcore at all. Wow! Culture cut! For a moment, you almost think he's going to put his hand down. But that would be ludicrous. I think you might be right. But how could it become hardcore then? I know it in my heart, but cannot sink it in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? Try to think of anything could make it harder core. What? Guys, there's something happening in his head. Think even harder. Oh yeah, he's doing it. God, I love this dude. But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. My imagination fails me. I know, so does mine. Uh, d d did I? Oh, no, no. Pfft. Sounds suspiciously like a question. I thought the question was, what is the question? 
Wait, I remember something. I am the police. Uh-huh. Uh... Uh, nothing. Me being the police isn't going to help us. Oh. Can help you with this right now. I need something else, something extra. What? Expert on a Nordic music. Are you a thought leader? No nation, but trans nation. No war, but class war. But does that mean you're a thought leader? Don't be a lunatic. Of course he isn't. Germania just yells random things. Odds are, sooner or later one of them will come off as thought reading. Yeah! Revachon imperative! Unless you were thinking... Weather show imperative right now. Anyway, I've had a similar thing happen with eggs yelling. I know what you mean. You're right, I wasn't thinking that. Hardcore superstar! Yeah! Why are there lungs on your belt buckle? Is it connected to Dolores Day? Lungs are for love! L'amour, la compassion, le de discipline. Love! In a woman's lungs. Lonely as I am, I'm not afraid. This strange, damaged feeling grows on and on. Cause I've never loved someone like you before. How do you like it in the church? Yeah! Back on the case, no disgrace! Bring it down to party place! The first page of the second chapter! You're not helping me, buddy. Could it be? Maybe for him. You only have a chapter or two left in you. Last of the penultimate, more like. I really want to try this. Alright, goodbye for now. Let me, uh, physical instrument. Right, right, right. We got All this in the right. bag. We solved the mystery of the egghead, but there's more to it, and I want to know what it is. Physical instrument? Yes. Electrochemistry is fun too, but not at the moment. <laughs> Physical instrument. How much do I have? I have plus one. Oh. Oh. Minus three authority. You know, I don't really need authority for what I'm about to do or say here. That should be more than enough. Let's play with what we got. Pay threshold. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Man, that looks good. Give me the full shebang. Now that we're here. Boom. Oh, I gave my hat to the, the girl, though. No. I got the pants. I got the... Yeah, the only thing that's missing is the hat. Okay, let's do this. Vibrations thump through your blue soul. The music sounds much better in the church. He stands on stage behind a table, nodding along to the music and waving his hand in the air. In front of him, the audio mixer. One reel spinning. The other reel deck is empty. Cables run hither and thither. On one side you see an auxiliary line in, with the number 4.5 written next to it. Maybe your body can tell you what Arno van Eyck's jam is missing. To make it harder core. You know it in your lungs where the pressure should vibrate, in your heart that's alone, and in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every chordate animal. Needs more bass. What? The young man makes a sudden move, like he's about to turn the volume down, but that would be ridiculous. And the melody, a good melody is what makes the song really stick, so that you can't get it out of your head anymore. Wow, okay. We should start with the melody. But where would we get that stuff from? Uh, I don't know. I was thinking you would know. I'm sorry. 
I don't know anything about anodic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. He feels ashamed. He can't be of more service to the future of dance music. Citizen investigation? I look into it. In an official capacity, it's up to the police to make the beats go harder. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile, as if it could hinder your investigation. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it, so that Egghead could use it to remix Van Eight's jam. Cool. Don't we have said tape? Yeah. Maybe that street talker across the pawn shop has got some tapes to sell. That's just an idea. Ooh. There is a hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's lane, right next to the canal. A reel of magnetic tape is caught in its branches, like bronze ribbons blowing in the wind. Wow, shivers. Spoilers. <laughs> Rue de Songe's lane. I've been there. Oh, I know. I know this. I can tell you where it is. St. G is the boulevard before the canal bridge. The one that takes you to the whirling in rags in the industrial harbour. It's got the lanterns and the... I knew that! I could have said that! And the mosaic sidewalk. But it's all blocked with that stupid traffic jam right now. Anyway... It feels cold. Why would I say that? Uh, or that? I don't know! Does it? He looks around, looking for the cold. Shake it off. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, Copman. Copman! Uh, do I have a tape? Is your real name Zermin? Dark Hard Hardcore! Jermaine Egghead! Um, basically, yes, it is. <laughs> Hey, I have a tape with me. Maybe you can use it to improve Van Eyck's jam? Tape! Yeah! Spin the tape into the space escape! Yeah! Oh. oh, no, 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 never mind, never mind. Yeah. No, 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 not that one. I want to try it now. It's the guy screaming on the microphone, the, uh, the, 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 the deceased. Good lord. I appreciate, however, of the developers for adding that as an option. That's pretty cool, but oh boy. <laughs> that would be disastrous. It would be like a, a guy screaming. By the way, Alice, do we have a, any news of, of these uh, boots? The, the, phone, the, the pull out toolbox and the, the serial number. The this is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? The boots, Alice. The boots! Yes. It took some convincing, but I got the mercenary's name and a few biographical details. Are you ready? Have I ever? The lieutenant leans in to listen, notebook in hand. The world will end soon. What? Shoot. That suit of armor was issued to an Orani citizen named Elis Tortenaer. That's E L L I S K O R. T E N A E R. Exact date of birth unknown. He was signed into the Lelystad County Neonatal Care Unit on 28th of February 09. Neonatal Care Unit? He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor near an abandoned farm. He spent four months in the Neonatal Unit, survived apparently, and was assigned to a foster family at two. According to Classia, Lele said his real name wasn't really his. Perhaps that's because he was fostered. This is what the ICP knows about him. He was raised by foster parents, entered the East Brand Military Academy in Vredefort at 17, then served in the Oranese forces till he was honorably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Then the armor followed him to Seminine, or at least I assume it did. And that's it. There are no records of his employment in Crenel, or any of its other incarnations. Or him even entering Ravashon. Wait, he was found in a leaf compactor? It's a garden tool used to press leaves into these cubes. 
It's a detail the hospital has, the only detail in these files. So I thought it would be good for you to know. It is. Thank you, Alice. Any information on his foster parents? None, officer. Sorry. So all we have to connect him to Crenell is the armor. Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double-check their inventory. Thank you, Alice. Great work. No problem, Lieutenant. Well, we have his name and service record now. The name? This is very good. Elise Cortenard. This means something to him. To know that name. Like name in a case. It's important. Sometimes, police work is about human dignity. About giving back names to anonymous victims. I'm glad the inquiry was helpful to your investigation, officer. Did you have any other questions? No, Alice, thank you very much. 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a... Man, am I glad this is over. It's been five days, girl. Five whole days. Okay, the working firearm that shoots 4.46. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, done. We have figurines to offer to Dolores Day. We have two of the figurines to offer her. And now we have to go over to uh, ceiling. This place. Oh, this is what the boys meant. The Hawthorn tree. On Rue de Sanges Lane, bronze-colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. How did we miss that? Was it inaccessible before we tried this quest? Just like promised, you've stood here for what seems like eons, guzzling the sickly fumes of lorries and carriages. <laughs> Piece of nature, punch the tree! Oh, karaoke superstar. The multi-tool is truly multi. Disentangle the tape. With slow and deliberate motions, pulling, bending, and unraveling, you manage to extricate the magnetic tape from the branches. It curls up into a mess inside your pocket. If only you could find a way to re-spool it, so that you could hear what's on the tape. Can I not do it? I've done that for tapes before. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop can help you with this. Thanks, Logic. Thanks for the spot. Oh my god! What's the tape for? The lieutenant looks at the mess in your hands. Only after you've successfully cleaned up the branches does the curiosity get him. <laughs> I'm too embarrassed to say. It's for Egghead. I promised to make his uh, Van Eyck's jam hit a bit harder. Maybe this tape can help. How? It's broken and unspooled. Do you think your new buddy knows how to fix it? He has to. He's the master of ceremonies after all. All right. <laughs> you could also get it fixed at the pawn shop across the street. We shouldn't waste our time. You know, since tape spinning isn't really our day job, solving murder investigations is. Good idea. He might have the tools. The tape projector in the pawn shop uses similar tape. <laughs> Let's not be that guy. Good, Hawthorne. Patting the tree reveals a small sticker which has almost been worn to oblivion. It reads, RCM Emergencies Desk. Number 8102, underneath a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. Uh-huh. You tree-hugging pansy. Come, come on. The gnarled hawthorn tree on Rue de Sanges Lane endures the wintry gusts with ease. Isn't that the number... Clasha used to call the RCM and tell them about the murder. It's kind of far away from home. Do we know where the phone call came from?
Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Hey, uh, do you know how to fix this? You mean Reese Poli? Yeah, I do, but... Great! Could you do it, please? This is important. I need to be able to play this tape for someone. But I'm not some Mr. Fix-It. I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure. Although it looks pretty... worthless. Just explain why you need this so much. He's bound to understand. Worthless? It's not worthless, Roy. This could be the next big thing for the local dance music scene. Huh? What do you mean? Do you know that old church down the coast? Yes. What about it? I help some young ravers turn this place into a nightclub. And they play these weird beats there, which they call a Nordic music. Is it any good? The music, I mean. No, that's the thing. You can't believe how unbelievably thin the bit is. There's nothing to it, no bass. It just goes bzz, 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 bzz. But this tape could make it hardcore. Man, you're really invested in this. He looks at the bundle of tape in front of him. It shimmers under the shop's dazzling light show. Okay, I'll help you out. It's going to take a moment, though. So just sit back and relax. Oh, Roy, you're a lifesaver. You take some time to look around the store. The play of visuals all around the pawn shop is mesmerizing. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a reel of tape in his hand and coughs. Well, thanks for the help. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll do what I can for true passion projects. Just try not to use this tape for negative photon emissions. Take responsibility. Okay. <laughs> Can we listen to it? Oh my god. Come, Kim, let's listen to some new beats. Get ready, boy. Get ready. Items. Oh, really? I cannot use it? I also have the empty cassette one. Um. No, I don't think I can interact with this. That's... Yeah. It's a quest item, maybe that's why. Doesn't matter. Where's my music? There we go! I should have given him that tape. That's also pretty good. Beats-wise. Yeah, this mission is so much fun to do. I mean, the murder investigation is also pretty cool and whatnot, but this one takes the cake. And uh, the, the raver mission, the raver quest was rather lengthy too. God damn it, I can't. Do I have any booze in my inventory? I have a beer. I don't think the guy needs a beer. I don't- I'm not gonna drink the beer. Maybe I can give uh, the beer to you. Tequila Sunset. Hey, uh, sorry for being a buzzkill earlier. I'll supply the booze if you supply the stories. Wonderful. Oh, thank god, I can get rid of it. Here, I've got a potent pilsner. Not much, but it will do. He grabs the bottle from your hand and uncorks it immediately. The tale I'm about to tell you is an urban legend particular to Martinez. That said, I first heard it from a former bicycle courier in Koran. There are many variations on the basic story, and the details often conflict. What everyone agrees on is that nobody knows the exact nature or identity of the phenomenon. <gasps> Phasmids? Are you telling the story of the Headless? Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. Spoilers! <clears throat> Summer of 44. 17-year-old Gertrude Hett is walking home from a late shift at the harbor. It's almost midnight. She stops for a cigarette near the canal. The streets are warmed 
by a southerly breeze, the lights of a passing motor carriage bloom and fade in the distance. In the harbour's dark, her cigarette is a beacon, dancing alone. The image comes to you effortlessly, as though you'd walked the same streets yourself a thousand times. Our heroine finds herself enjoying the peace and quiet the canal provides. Yes? Oh, he looks up to the skies as if searching for peace himself. What she doesn't know is that her peace is about to be shattered. From behind her comes the clattering of hooves. Startled, she turns around, and what does she see? <laughs> the giant of Coconur! A horse? Well, yes, but it's the man on the horse that's of interest here. A man with no head on his shoulders. Wearing a Falm tracksuit, searching for the legendary Falm cap that went missing when he lost his head. Wait, I thought the headless fallen rider rode a bull? I thought that he rode a headless pig. The lieutenant says with a little smirk. Well, there are many versions of this story. The most peculiar of which has the headless Falm rider riding on the back of another headless man. That sounds pretty implausible to me. If I hadn't lost my keys that one time, I'd agree with you. But life is a cruel mistress. He takes a sip. Gertrude Het may have been the first to witness the headless Falm rider, but she wasn't the last. Oh no. Tell them about the two feminists by the locks. Fuck, Rosemary, they were dating. No one said they were feminists. Everyone always misremembering this stuff. He's the one to talk. Hmm. This wouldn't be the De Ponte Delgado case, would it? What? You know it. I've read the case file. But please, go on. He's invested. Right. <clears throat> Early autumn of 46. Ula de Pont and Eva Delgado are fishing near the waterlock long after the sun has set. The wind picks up. A sky already dark now blackens. Water starts falling from above. The first cold rain of the season. Two women stand on a small outcropping of rocks. One of them is wearing a purple raincoat. Thin lines reach out from the rods into the sea. Small droplets start appearing on the surface with increasing frequency. The women are caught in the downpour. They act quickly. Eva gathers the rods whilst Ulla turns around to reach for the tackle box. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. When she sees something, her shriek is so violent that the residents of the nearby apartment building believe lightning has struck. But there is no lightning. Only a heavy downpour and the silhouette of the headless Falm Rider looming on the horizon. Ulla makes a run for the shore, but Eva slips on a wet rock and disappears into the cold, cold canal with nary a sound. Her body is never recovered. What did the case file say? Naturally. Ula de Ponte became the prime suspect in the disappearance of Eva Delgado. De Ponte maintained that it was the so-called headless foreign rider and that she ran fearing for her life. He adjusts his glasses. During the investigation, it became apparent that there was a love triangle, the third party being some small-time businessman. I don't remember the exact details. The leading theory was that an argument broke out on the jetty and De Ponte pushed Delgado into the canal, then cooked up this stupid cover story. Was she arrested? No. She committed suicide before she could be taken into custody. They found her in the bathroom with a rifle, her face slowly peeling off the ceiling. Not a pretty scene. Man, that's some grisly detail. Oh well. Here's to another case closed. He takes a hearty swig from the bottle. Anyway, that's the story of the headless foul rider. Pretty crazy, huh? Who was the headless rider before he died? Well, Tequila, that's part of the legend. No one knows for sure. There are a couple of possibilities, though. 
Some say he was an undercover cop who blew his cover and got beheaded by the vicious gang he had infiltrated. Now he rides, searching for his lost found cap, plotting revenge. O oh, headless brother, where art thou? Others claim he was a professional jockey who veered off course during a steeplechase, ended up in somebody's backyard, and got decapitated by an exceptionally taut clothesline. Even decapitation couldn't stop his commitment to the sport. Are you that committed? Personally, I think he was just some guy who hanged himself from a really tall tree, and the fall was so violent that his head came clean off. Coincidentally, at that exact moment, a horse happened to pass under him, and his beheaded corpse mounted it, where it remains to this day. But then, no one really knows. For some reason, this does strike you as the most plausible theory of them all. I've gotta agree, your theory sounds the most plausible. Isn't it? All pieces fit together perfectly. That's how I know it's right. Anyway, to each his own. You wanna hear any other stories? I've already seen some weird shit on this case. Headless jockey in a tracksuit fits right in. Hard to argue is that, I suppose. That's the reality situation for you. You think you got a handle on it, then blam! It throws some wild shit at you. Uh, that's why it's critical to stay well hydrated. That's nothing. I've got an even crazier story. Oh no. Yeah? Why don't you go eat shit, Tequila? There's no way you know a better one than that. Oh boy. <laughs> the Gnome of Zeroma dissolves its victims with acid. Acid gnomes? Sounds like a stupid, <laughs> low-concept <laughs> band name. Okay, uh, whatever became of the Headless Fawn Rider? No one knows. Some say he stalks Martinez to this day, and can be seen near the canal when the clock strikes midnight. <laughs> he won't, though, because it's just a stupid legend. Oh, come on, Kim. Hi. I saw him one night when I was right shit-faced. Have you got any more urban myths? I actually do have one. The strangest of them all. But I'll need to fortify myself before I can tell that one. Do you have anything to fortify old Doom Spiral? Tell me you got some story. I don't have anything right now. I'll be back, though. It's very hard to tell a story when one's mouth is dry. Be seeing ya! Okay, let's take a small break. And I will see you on the next episode of Disco Elysium. Until then, thank you everybody for watching. Have fun, whatever you do. Take care of yourselves and do not forget, keep on gaming. I will see you all next time.